Hi viewer, welcome to our another video. In this video we will discuss about Solid Principles. We will be uploading videos on technology and career guidance on our channel regularly to encourage us to do more videos like this. Please subscribe to our channel if you are watching our channel for the first time. Don't forget to like this video if you like our video. Please share with your friends. Solid principles facilitate us to win most of the design issues. These principles showed us different approaches to overcoming least encapsulation and tightly coupled code. Generally, programmers initiate the process of application building with clean and good designs depending on their experience. But, with time, applications might develop bugs and the application has to be modified for each new feature or change request. After a long time, we have to more effort possibly, even for minor tasks, and it might need a lot of energy and time. But since they are software developments part, we cannot ignore them as well. Let's look at a few design issues which are creating damage to any software in many cases. When we put more stress on specific classes by assigning them more responsibilities to them, which are not related to that class. When we impose the class to hinge on each other or when they are tightly coupled. When we utilize duplicate code in the application. To overpower these concerns, we can incorporate the following tactics. We must select the appropriate architecture for the application. We must adhere to the design principles carried out by experts. We must select the right design patterns to develop the software as per its specifications and requirements. Solid stands for the following. S equals single responsibility principle. O equals open closed principle. L equals list of substitution principle. I equals interface segregation principle. D equals dependency inversion principle. S single responsibility principle. A class should only have a single responsibility, that is, only changes to one part of the software specification should be able to affect the specification of the class. One of the most popularly utilized design principles, the single responsibility principle, helps to achieve object-oriented goals. By implementing the single responsibility principle, we can cut down dependency between functionalities, therefore can better handle our code for incorporating new features over the long run. The single responsibility principle, SRP, explains that every class, function or module in your program should only carry out one responsibility. Each should take the job for a single functionality of the program. The class should comprise only methods and variables relevant to its functionality. Classes can function together to accomplish larger complicated tasks, but every class must execute a function from the beginning to the end before it sends the output to another class. Martin described this by stating, a class should have only one reason to change. Here, the reason is that we wish to alter the single functionality this class pursues. If we do not choose the single functionality to vary, we will never alter this class, as all components of the class should relate to that behavior. SRP makes it simple to adhere to another well-respected principle of OOP, encapsulation. It is simple to hide data from the customer when all methods and data for a job are within the exact single responsibility class. If you incorporate a getter and setter approaches into a single responsibility class, the class matches all criteria of an encapsulated class. The advantages of programs that adhere to SRP are that you can adjust the behavior of a function by modifying the single class responsible for it. Additionally, if a single functionality collapses, you know where the bug will be in the code and can count on the fact that only that class will break. Advantages of the single responsibility principle. Let's talk about the most significant questions before we delve into this design principle. Why should you use it? The reasoning for the single responsibility principle is comparatively straightforward. It makes your software simpler to incorporate and restrict unforeseen side effects of future changes. You should modify your class more often, and every modification is more complex, has more side effects, and needs a lot more effort than it should have. Thus, it's good to ward off these problems by ensuring that each class has just one responsibility. Apart from that, if you wish to have a better understanding of what's happening in your application, you can make use of Retrace's code profiling solution. The class is simpler to comprehend. 
When the class just does one thing, usually its interface has a few methods that are reasonably self-explanatory. It should also have a few member variables, less than 7. The class is effortless to manage. Changes are isolated, cutting down the probability of splitting other unrelated areas of the software. As programming flaws are inversely proportional to complexity, being simpler to figure out makes the code less inclined to bugs. The class is more reusable. If a class has different responsibilities, and just one of those is required in another area of the software, then the additional irrelevant responsibilities deter reusability. Owning a single responsibility implies the class should be reusable without modification. O. Open, Closed Principle, OCP. This is the second principle of solid principles, which is described as follows. A software class or module should be open for extension but closed for modification. Open, closed principle. If we have jotted a class, then it has to be flexible enough that we should not modify it, closed for modification, until bugs are there, but a new feature can be incorporated, open for extension, by implementing a new code without changing its existing code. This principle highlights that it should be plausible to expand functionality in classes without the need to alter the existing code in the classes, i.e. it should be feasible to expand the behavior of the software without changing its core existing implementation. Basically, it specifies that devise your classes or code in such a manner that to insert new features into the software, you add new code without modifying existing code. Not modifying existing code has the advantage that you will not bring in new bugs into already working code. By open for extension, it implies that you should devise your code implementations in such a manner that you can utilize inheritance to incorporate new functionality in your application. Your design should be such that rather than modifying the existing class, add a new class that obtains from the base class and include a new code to thus derived class. For inheritance, look towards interface inheritance rather than class inheritance. If the derived class revolves around the implementation in the base class, then you are building a dependency that is a tight coupling between the derived class and the base. With the interface, you can offer new features by including a new class that incorporates this interface without modifying the interface and prevailing other classes. The interface also facilitates loose coupling between classes that carry out the interface. L. Liskov Substitution Principle. Objects in a program should be replaceable with instances of their subtypes without altering the correctness of that program. Let phi x be a property provable concerning objects x of type t. Then phi y has to be true for objects y of type s, where s is a subtype of t. This interpretation appears to be too much pedagogical than practical. Liskov substitution principle is about how you design your solution hierarchy with the help of abstractions while retaining the logic as robust and intact. If the academic definition has to be explained, an object B inherits, extends object A, we assume that any logic expecting a should function accurately if B is passed to it. If you are already functioning with an OOP, object-oriented programming, language, you would learn that most compilers would perform static checking to ensure that if class B inherits from class A, all members in A can be found in B. Thus, this is not actually the point. You should make sure that the code of B is not hiding any intentions that could split the logic. This will not be detected by the compiler, you need to do it yourself. LSP Rules when you are struggling to comprehend the Liskov substitution principle, it's hard to look for a concise description of the rules. The rules are modest enough to describe, but the implications can be tricky to figure out. The effect of the violation of the Liskov substitution principle can be important, and it can end in investing a lot of time spent fixing bugs. Hence, Liskov substitution principle is essential if your prevailing code consists of a lot of supertype-subtype relationships. The LSP rules are, subclass should incorporate all classes of the base class. This implies there should be no techniques that throw, not implemented exception. Overridden method of the parent class has to accept the exact parameters in the child class. For instance, you possess a method, calculate square, in the parent class that accepts an int as a parameter. This implies you can't point out the exact method in the child class, 
override it with the keyword new and design an extra rule that will confirm that the number is not negative. If you attempt to pass minus 3 in the client code but utilize the child class rather than the super class, the client code will have the exception. And that's not the behavior that was proposed by the base class. Advantages Stops code to break if someone by mistake has altered the base class with the derived class since its behavior does not change. Derived classes can readily throw exceptions for the method which are not managed by them. Interface segregation principle Many client-specific interfaces are better than one general-purpose interface. Interface segregation principle ISP interface segregation principle demands that classes will only be capable of performing behaviors that are helpful in achieving their end functionality. Classes do not consist of behaviors they do not use. This refers to our first solid principle. Together, ISP and OCP principles remove a class of all methods, behaviors, or variables that do not directly add to their role. Methods should add to the end goal in their entirety. This principle defines that the client should not be made to hinge on methods it will not implement. This principle supports the incorporation of several small interfaces rather than one big interface since it will let clients choose the needed interfaces and implement the same. The aim of this principle is to split the software into minor classes that do not carry out the interface or methods which will not be used by the class. This will facilitate keeping the class stay put, lean and decoupled from dependencies. This principle advises not to enforce one big interface rather, there should be several small interfaces that can be chosen by classes that require implementing those. The interface which is incorporated by the class has to be closely related to the responsibility which will be implemented by the class. While creating interfaces, we should design according to the single responsibility principle in solid principles. We should aim to keep our interfaces small since larger interfaces will involve additional methods and all implementers might not require several methods. If we keep interfaces large, it might result in many functions in the implementer class, which can also go against the single responsibility principle. The benefit of ISP is that it breaks large methods into minor, more precise methods. This makes the program simpler to debug for the below mentioned reasons. There is limited code transferred between classes. Less code implies fewer bugs. A single method handles a smaller range of behaviors. If there is an issue with a behavior, you are only required to look over the minor methods. If a general method with several behaviors is transferred to a class that doesn't back all behaviors, including calling for a property which the class doesn't own, there will be a bug if the class seeks to utilize the unsupported behavior. D. The Dependency Inversion Principle, DIP. One should depend upon abstractions, not concretions. The Dependency Inversion Principle is the fifth principle of solid principles, which is described as follows. This principle indicates that loose coupling between high-level and low-level classes should exist and to get this, loose coupling elements should rely on abstraction. In straightforward terms, it suggests that classes should rely on abstract classes, interfaces and not on concrete types. Dependency Inversion Principle This principle in solid principles is also regarded as inversion of control, IOC, and was initially hailed IOC, but Martin Fowler proposed the name the IE. Dependency Inversion or Dependency Injection This principle simply states that you should bring in abstraction between high-level and low-level classes that lets us decouple the high-level and low-level classes from each other. If classes rely on each other, then they are tightly coupled with each other. When classes are tightly coupled, then modifications in one class bring about modifications in all other dependent classes. Rather, low-level classes should incorporate contracts using abstract classes or interface and high-level classes should adopt these contracts to access concrete types. We relate this principle to other principles in solid principles. If you adhere to both the Liskov substitution principle and open, closed principle in your code, then it will indirectly also abide by the dependency inversion principle. What are the low-level and high-level modules? The low-level modules involve more precise individual components, concentrating on details and minor parts of the application. These modules are utilized within the high-level modules in our application. 
The high-level modules define those operations in our application that possess an extremely abstract nature and comprise more complicated logic. These modules deal with low-level modules in our application. What we ought to know when we talk about the dependency inversion principle in these modules is that both, the low-level and high-level modules, rely on abstractions. We can identify several opinions concerning if the deep inverts dependency between high-level and low-level modules or not. Some comply with the first opinion and others adopt the second. But the familiar ground is that the deep forms a decoupled structure between high-level and low-level modules by presenting abstraction between them. Benefits Classes rely on abstraction and do not depend on concrete types. Low-level and high-level classes are loosely coupled. As long as you are not modifying contracts, variation in one class will not trigger a shift in another class. Since classes rely on abstraction, change in one class will not split another class. Benefits of the solid principle Accessibility The solid principle assures uncomplicated to control and access to object entities. The integrity of stable object-oriented applications gives easy access to objects, reducing the chances of unintended inheritance. Ease of refactoring. Software changes with time. Thus, programmers are required to develop applications, considering the possibility of future changes. Software applications which are poorly constructed make it challenging to refactor, but it is quite easy to refactor your code base with the solid principle. Extensibility. The software goes through stages of improvement, including extra features. If the features of an application are not extended tactfully, this could affect prevailing functionalities and lead to unexpected problems. The process of extensibility could be a tiring process since you're required to design existing functionalities in the codebase, and if the existing functionalities are not rightly designed, this can make it even more challenging to include extra features. But the application of solid principles causes the extensibility procedure to be smoother. Debugging Debugging is an important aspect of the software development process. When software applications are not rightly devised, and the code base gets clustered like spaghetti, it becomes difficult to debug applications. The solid principle embodies the feature of assuring that the software's debugging process is much more comfortable. Readability a well-designed code base can be simple to comprehend and easy to read. Readability is also a crucial element in the software development process as it makes the refactoring and debugging operations easier, specifically in open source projects. The solid principle method assures that your code is comparatively easier to read and interpret. Thank you for watching our video. I am Sirish Kantamanani. If you have any questions or doubts on the topic like technology and career guidance please comment below so we will reply or make a video on it. You are watching.